Hey there folks, Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty podcast here with another installment of Abolitionist Abstractions. Uh, today I want to discuss how government can, well, one of the many ways government can tear apart families. Uh, and this is especially prevalent in cases where the parents are either both statists or one of them is a statist. Um, here in New York, the divorce cases, custody battles, stuff like that, um, almost always go in favor of the mother. Now, I know this is fairly prevalent throughout the country, but here in New York, it uh, seems to be even worse. Uh, I think I've seen the numbers, national average, be somewhere around 80% of the time. The uh, mothers walk away with the children in a custody battle regardless of the actual circumstances. Uh, I think the number here in New York is actually higher than that um, because the system is skewed against the fathers. And this is perpetuated by government because they're the ones that write the laws. They're the ones that claim they want to protect families. They're the ones that claim they're doing this, these things that they do for the children. But if you have a situation where there is a dispute and one or both parties are only aware of the option of running to the state for answers, that is usually what happens. So, for instance, what happens when one parent wishes to take the children out of state on some kind of trip against the other parent's wishes? Well, in a civilized society, uh, the two individuals would talk things out and attempt to work out a, a compromise. In the status paradigm, however, there is an incentive for one or both parents, depending on the actual participants, to run to the state and hide behind their guns so they can get what they want. Um, you know, what happens if the one parent is a voluntarist and does attempt to come out come up with a compromise and does attempt to work things out peacefully um, but the other parent just wants to get what they want for whatever the reason it doesn't really matter it still boils down to being a selfish reason um, and then you know, say for instance, plane tickets are purchased, hotel accommodations are set up, and uh, the parent who wanted a compromise is left in a position that uh, they'll be made out to be the bad guy if they try to interfere. You know, what happens in that situation if the parent who's a voluntarist knows that the game is sort of rigged against them to start with and now they've been put behind the eight ball and it's essentially play ball or lose out on your kids entirely you know that becomes an issue when you're talking about somebody who's actually principled uh, which sadly most people are not, but there are there there are some among us that are. 
because now that person is put in a very tight spot. It's either roll over and uh, have things done against your wishes or risk losing your kids entirely. You know, take it a step further. What if other people decide to get involved? Other friends or family members who are also statists and have no problem using the violence of the state against others so they or their friends and family can get what they want. Well, in those situations, it's highly likely that one of those individuals will actually literally call the guns of government to show up to prevent the peaceful person from just seeing their children. They will call the cops as if some harm had befallen someone. You know? Now this gets even worse when one of the people involved, although not necessarily directly, but uh, say a family member themselves is a former law enforcement officer who thinks that everything they ever did was right. So calling their friends in to handle the situation is also perfectly right. You know, what would you do in that situation? Do you just accept defeat and pray that somehow the horribly skewed and corrupt system will work out in your favor? Or do you continue to fight and stand up for your principles? What if you were told that a trip was happening regardless of your consent and then you were told at the last minute that not only was this trip being done without your consent but it has now been extended in time and what if you found out at the last minute that this trip was happening against your will and it was extended in time and you were given less than two hours to get your stuff together just to be able to see your children before they were whisked away. What if, because you only had that short amount of time and you had already been given the runaround and lied to and now you are angry um, now I would quickly pause it and say that well I, I can't imagine anybody who wouldn't be angry in this situation apparently there's some people who think that uh, shouldn't be but what if you're now angry and you now have this short time span and again you, you really don't have much choice in the matter what if you're now presented with men in uniform just because you want to see your children even if you've actually done nothing wrong even by the state standards what if the agents of the state are used against you to prevent you from seeing your children at all? Now, I know there'll be some people out there, even some parents, who would say, Oh, it's no big deal. My kids drive me nuts. I'd love to have a break from them. Well, as a father, I can understand that. Our kids of all ages do nutty things sometimes that kind of drive us up a wall. But uh, I'm not really that kind of person. I do like being around my kids. I uh, 
I may not always have time for them, but I, I try to make it available as much as possible. And, uh, you know, if, say, for instance, they were not only removed from my presence, but are removed from the same state I am in for days on end, makes it a lot harder to be able to, you know, spend time with them. So I put this question to you. What would you do? Would you just roll over and say, oh, that's just life? Would you try to play the game in order to secure time with your children? Or would you stand up for what you believe in? And again, I know a lot of people would see this and say, well, the answer is obvious. If you want to see your children, then you, you have to do what you have to do. Well, that's where we run into another problem. What if you have spent the majority or all of your, ch your child or your children's lives trying to teach them about the tenets of non-aggression and volunteerism? What if you have been attempting to teach them about being principled and sticking to those principles and not compromising on them because the history is littered with men who have compromised their positions and their principles in order to play the game to either selfishly get something they want or to purportedly get things that others want. And when that happens, it just makes the next time that much easier. You know, you see it with politicians all the time. People swear up and down, this guy or this, this, this woman, they're going to be different. They're one of us. You know, they... They, they, really, they really stand by their principles. And then they get into office. And all of a sudden, they start voting on things that confuse you. And you say, well, that doesn't make sense. They claim they were for this. And if you have a readily accessible Congress critter, or state Congress critter, or representative, or whoever it is you're talking about, if they're uh, rather accessible and you can reach out to them and speak to them, you will often hear a lot of the same rhetoric. Oh, well, this is how the game is played. You know, I, I had to give them this so I could get that. And uh, for some people, that's enough. Some people buy into that. Well, actually, a lot of people buy into that, which is why statism is perpetuated ad nauseum because people believe this garbage well what that is saying is that you believe the ends justify the means and for me that is just not acceptable because that is how we, we got ourselves into the position we find ourselves in in the year 2015 and how it's been for centuries because people are always willing to compromise their principles just a little bit. Whether they never had them to begin with, or they honestly believe they're just temporarily putting them aside. Once you, you do it for the first time, it makes the second time that much easier. It makes the third time even easier than that. And before you know it, you'll look back and say, hmm, that principal thing, I used to have that. I wonder where it went. I can't seem to locate it. So that's the position you would find yourself in if you're willing to compromise your principles in order 
to get time with your children. Now, like I said, I know some people might hear this, and some people I've actually spoken to about this already uh, have said a lot of the same things, and said, well, you just got to put them aside, and like I said, that just doesn't work for me. So I put it to my audience, what would you do? What would you do if your children were taken away from you? Not because it was what was best for them, but because somebody else had a selfish need. And what if you tried to argue against that, and tried to do it logically, by the way, actually have a, a rational discussion about why this wasn't such a good idea, what if you came up with a compromise in an attempt to make everybody happy and even with the compromise you would still end up losing but what if you brought that compromise and it was ignored what if you made it clear in no, no uncertain terms that if this was done, it was definitely in violation of your consent. What if the other person knew your stance, knew your feelings, knew your principles, knew you would not go against them for any reason? What if the other person knew that you would never use the violence of the state. What if the other person involved was willing to be led by the nose by someone else, say a parent? What if they disregarded everything you had to say waited till the last possible second to book a flight at a time that they knew full well there was nothing that could be done about it by you. What if, after hearing the news and being angry, but still trying to compose yourself enough just so you can actually physically see your children before they whisk away, you were met with the force of the state, all because one of the parties involved is a coward and has no problem calling other people with guns to do their bidding. What if all this happened and your only recourse was to use the state? which you know is already horribly slanted in the opposite direction of where you want to go. What would you do? What would you do? I think that's all I got for today, folks. You know, like I said, this is just one of the many ways the state interferes in your life state can ruin your family. The state can keep you from your children, even though you have done not, an, not only nothing morally wrong, but you haven't even done anything wrong by their pathetic standards. This is what can happen when you place your faith in the state. And that's why I rejected that notion a long time ago and uh, I won't ever go back thanks for listening folks this has been Jeremy from the Seeds of Liberty podcast with the another installment of Abolition Abstractions peace